Welcome to this first episode of TE Talks. In this session, uh, I would like to help you with understanding some of the concepts of uh, text analytics, especially how it helps business today. Uh, while the session addresses about text mining frameworks and industry use cases, it's not a tech savvy session. Be rest assured, I will definitely not bore you. Before getting started, let me spend few uh, minutes on the logistics. And of course, like, you know, uh, I myself like found bit difficult to uh, enable like the audio and video so i just wanted to uh, just give a quick uh, uh, like you know session on the uh, logistics on the left hand side you will notice the list of participants on the right there's a chat window feel free to type in your questions there uh, while I'll, I'll i'll try to try my best to answer all your questions for the sake of time i'll address few questions here and follow up with you on the rest uh, the center video is where you can see my presentation i would recommend you to uh, go full screen uh, for a better experience uh, first your bells and let's get started. Uh, just give me some time to brag about me. <laughs> so I myself, uh, uh, Deepak Murugayan and uh, uh, I'm currently the CEO and co-founder at Teach Edison here. I have a master's uh, in artificial intelligence. That's the uh, reason I just wanted to have a session, especially on the text analytics part. I was a researcher with uh, uh, kind of a Fortune 10 uh, uh, research lab. And later on, I consulted for about five years where uh, I, I, I helped organizations to uh, uh, in the mine insights from uh, data, especially from uh, unstructured data. So my core areas are uh, still lies with machine learning, text and web analytics. That's where uh, I uh, spend a lot of time, especially customer experience as a science is what I practice day in and day out. And uh, about Teach Edison, just a quick introduction. We are a technology company where we wanted to solve the quality education crisis. Uh, people call it this new term, education technology company, EdTech. So we are one such kind and we are here to provide an ecosystem around online education to make the uh, education equitable, credible and impactful. Let me stop here. I just don't want to bore you further. Let's get into business. So I think like uh, this is a famous quote every other uh, data scientist or data person has have come across. I just wanted to start with this. There's a reason behind it. It's a famous quote attributed to uh, Williams Edwards Deming, who is also known as the father of modern quality management. He's a Japanese guy. And uh, if, you, if you really uh, 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 think like this guy is no more now, but uh, much of his sampling techniques are still used by uh, the famous US Department of Census and Bureau of Labor. Uh, in fact, this quote, in God we trust, rest of us must bring data is very true for a naughty kid who comes back from school and tells his parents about his marks in the test, all right? Uh, and I'm sure most of us have done this and uh, until unless you show the report card, they won't give a shit about it. Like they don't believe us, right? They don't trust you. But the data here, which is the report card from your teacher is what the evidence or the proof for your marks or your performance. So as one can see like here, uh, data isn't something new that jumped all the way right now. Uh, we are living with it. In fact, like uh, from day one, uh, when we uh, when we are born, we have the data of birth certificate, right? So all this data information are uh, being uh, like, you know, uh, day to day we use it. Uh, but a lot of, all of a sudden, like uh, you see a lot of data coming in and a lot of people talking about analytics, data science, statistics, machine learning, all those jargons suddenly came in. Let's, let's quickly, uh, see a history, a bit of history about it. Like if you could really see in the 1980s, that's where like, uh, I, I would start with 1980s, but I, I also understand that statistics and visualization uh, date back history. A lot of uh, other his historic persons have tried the science as well. But I just wanted to uh, start with 70s or 80s where the digital world started to boom. In 80s, uh, especially uh, banking and finance giants, started adopting the computers in a more significant way. Like Apple is born, uh, IBM got a competition at the time, uh, Microsoft started sh selling spreadsheets that actually uh, the core of accounting or data collection at that point. In fact, the first knowledge discovery and data mining workshop, famously known as KDD workshop, uh, begin at that year, uh, in, in the year of 1989, where they started. That's what uh, the, the beginning of this data science or analytics started in the industry. And soon in the 90s, machine learning, data sciences evolved, uh, database marketing was even like more prevalent those days. In fact, like analytics as a function was born uh, in fortune companies at this very point in time. 
people started to build data models uh, to predict stocks at the time stocks was so hard and people want to somehow leverage data and started to predicting stocks and whoever predicts this more accurately they have a competitive edge right so that's that's how it started and um, interestingly uh, 2000 that's where uh, internet was more uh, becoming popular and the next major invention uh, among the tech giants like uh, yahoo google were creating new markets a lot of people started generating data on the internet websites blogs forums etc i mean like this is where uh, this is where actually lots of uh, textual data in the form of uh, internet like you know a uh, lot of textual data started to flow in now by the closure of the last decade uh, this has significantly boosted up with the upcoming of social media companies such as uh, twitter facebook and video libraries like uh, youtube vimeo emerged this has made the data to have multi facets if you really see it's no more only about numbers the data has become completely unstructured. In fact, a report from IDC tells 95% of data that is generated today is of unstructured kind. Okay, what is this unstructured data? You you keep on uh, like you know telling this unstructured data. What is what is it all about? What is an unstructured data is all? Any data that cannot be organized in a predefined template or a predefined manner, uh, such in the in this case like like tables. Traditionally, we used to store data in tables, the numbers. Uh, for example, spreadsheet is a very good example of table. So what all the data that cannot be organized in a structured table or a form is all unstructured. Examples are images, videos, and of course, text. Right? Uh, I, I, I think like I just uh, wanted to give a gl glimpse of the industry trend. Let's quickly get into the core topic. That's text analytics as a science. If you uh, if you see based on the context which which we saw there are a lot of blogs uh, people started to mine from social media and uh, like you know 95 percent of the data is unstructured but if you really think there are a lot of value hidden in these unstructured or textual data sources and uh, and if you really wanted to understand the imp really important thing uh, or what interesting thing one can derive from text analytics I just wanted to quote this uh, example to towards my right if you could see how can we use or how can public sentiments on Twitter versus Facebook affect the stock price? If you really think today, there are a lot of companies trying to predict the stock prices based on the sentiment, uh, uh, like, you know, over the web. For example, uh, 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 think of this, like, you know, there are a lot of insiders, uh, like, you know, trading going on, uh, 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 and then. but what if, if you have one algorithm or one, one way, how can you predict the uh, the quarterly uh, profits or if you want to predict what's the price of a particular company is going to happen tomorrow based on the discussion that happens over the web because today we we uh, we stop like you know if you really wanted to buy a product you go to the web right so all discussions are happening over the web and this is in the textual form so isn't it very interesting to uh, know right i mean like if you can predict the stock even like more accurately not only from numbers mere numbers are outdated believe me mere numbers are just outdated Right now, if you could actually mine a lot of these insights and try to predict the stock price, yeah, you can do. Uh, if, if, if you really know some of the basic text analytics, I mean, a lot of algorithms are available out there. You can actually do it, right? So let me let me also try to uh, quote the final thing here, which, which I wanted to start uh, with this quote. The most valuable information is at the least experienced places. So text is one important aspect which a lot of us really ignore. Today, a lot of companies, uh, when I consult, people uh, go behind numbers. They don't want to try uh, text analytics at all because it's not an exact science at the end of the day, but there are a lot of value you can get out of it. Uh, let's quickly get into the core. If you really think any textual analytics problem, I just wanted to fit in this four different aspects. This is a kind of a framework. This is one framework which you can, you, you can, you can use it anywhere. Where you come in, where is, a, where is a problem, there is a problem that involves text, you can either fit in either of these four aspects. Summarization, feature extraction, sentiment analysis, classification. Let's quickly see what all these uh, uh, technical jargons actually mean. Summarization, as, as you can see, it's, it's you have a long article and you wanted to summarize it. Right. So you have done a lot of exercise in your schools where, where our teachers give a lot of uh, big essays, ask you to write up uh, like a one third of the size. You summarize it, capturing the important points. Right. It's very similar to it. Uh, think of this. Uh, in fact, this particular technique is being used a lot in the literature and in research. When you wanted to uh, read through a million articles or let's say 100,000 pages relevant to one particular aspect. 
think of this for example if you wanted to summarize the entire history of europe over 200 years you take some uh, uh, thousands of books every other book going to cite some, some some the more or less like the same fact or information that is available now you you take all the books and digitize it and put it to this algorithm or this particular practice and finally what you get is like a two page summarizing the entire fact only the important ones and there are a lot of lot of other interesting examples you can take it out for example if you are using a customer logs you don't need to need the entire logs from a customer feedback you can just put it here summarize it and get the key points let's let's say let's try to get into more detail about what all the other aspects the second one which i said feature extraction right today uh, when you talk about text i mean like whenever you uh, read through any article let's say if i give you uh, some article from uh, some uh, dna research uh, guessing that you are not from a biology background it's very difficult for us to understand what people are talking about now if, if there's a piece of algorithm that extracts some features for example in this case i have given this mobile reviews if you if you give, if you read through all the mobile reviews and finally can you extract features that people talk about call quality people talk about display pricing and battery so these these there are some couple of cool cool things which you can do here right uh, I, as i said right i do i don't want to talk about the tech, technology aspect behind this or the technical aspect behind it but idea is like when you have a when you have a text and if you could actually extract features correlate those words to to cite an example call quality reception network quality all this talks about the same thing you can actually club that together form a cluster or form a group and call it as a meaningful name call quality because like most of the other aspects going to talk about it now this is the uh, important aspect or most people when i when i talk about text analytics uh, they take back to sentiment analysis right because every other person wants to understand what the author or the reviewer writes in his blog right is he sad is he happy is is he angry proud or whatsoever uh, to we'll we'll go with some few examples if you could see here the movie was great he was actually happy right uh, the trailer is not good he is disappointed might be like he he was having a lot of expectation for a new movie from from his favorite star or celebrity but uh, the trailer was not promising enough for him when he writes the trailer is not bad it completely uh, reflects his context of he's being disappointed now there is some other uh, uh, interesting things like uh, intolerable afraid so these are the other words people use and if you could spot those keywords and if you write a few lines of quotes or uh, uh, and this is some basic stuff there are other aspects as well but if you could actually uh, understand what your customers are trying to tell about your product or uh, your feature that would be really cool for a business to take decisions right now finally text classification no one uh, i think like i would say like every every other person i think no one will uh, uh, will would have uh, not encountered this uh, one single problem uh, which is email spam classification i really wonder couple of our promotional emails uh, related to the steel talk also went to spam so the idea is like whenever a email comes in there's a machine learning classifier which gmail obviously has in the back end it tries to classify an email saying that hey uh, this email is really important or it's a spam and this is this is this is a very classic example of text classification and in fact if you have uh, gone through some of your spam emails especially words like purchase uh, lottery price these are the words you will find in your spam that's because uh, by default uh, the algorithm knows that every uh, 99% of emails that has these words are going to be a spam they are, they are not relevant to to your or to of your interest or it's a scam something like that right so this is a very classic example of ta- uh, text classification but think of in a more uh, a more business context let's say you have one support email for your all services and uh, let's say that you got some five different products on all your emails comes to your inbox talking about either of these five now if you built a classifier or a text mining classifier that actually can separate this emails into five five of your products say that hey this email came from this particular customer talks about your product one this talks about product two if it if can automatically classify your emails or your tickets that's a great thing right it saves a lot of your time you don't even need to read through couple of emails to do that if you can build that right so i guess like these are the four things i just wanted you to take the core out of this entire exercise one text classification two sentiment analysis three feature extraction and four text summarization these are the four things which you will ever do in any textual problem right 
now uh, let let me walk through a, a quick uh, case study and in fact like you know i just wanted to uh, start with customer experience as a science uh, if you really think this is a traditional customer life cycle right you can you can follow the numbers red numbers initially a customer has a need so he does some uh, does some research today uh, people use blogs or uh, reviews to go through uh, read it read all websites like flipkart or uh, like you know amazon just go read through the about the product they research it finally they shortlist and select one particular product and finally purchase it right this is not the end of a cycle if you really think what do you then do you once you get the product you started using it and you started maintaining it and you feel lot of the pros and cons of the product now either you express it back saying that like you know you can go to uh, a kind of a, a website like flipkart or amazon where you got it send a write a review if you are happy about it you'll write about it or if you are if you are really frustrated you will even express that again the sales cycle starts again if you really think after you recommend it a new customer comes in and he starts from one right so this is a traditional uh, a cycle of a, a kind of a customer experience now how can we leverage text analytics to study it automatically and uh, i just wanted to pick this uh, uh, example which i uh, recently wrote in a blog as well so the smartphone industry if you really think today this is really hot this is hot like hell now every other company wants to beat the other <laughs> competitor and they release new phones every other day right and if you really think uh, these these are the five major uh, phone manufacturers that was uh, having out there and i just wanted to start start with this one story which uh, which 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 initially when uh, uh, when apple uh, released its revolutionary iphone there was this board meeting in uh, uh, finland uh, in nokia at the time nokia was the uh, uh, major comp or major market uh, it it has the major market share over uh, uh, phones and uh, in fact most of us used nokia as our first phones right so uh, in this board meeting uh, uh, they want to discuss about how can we uh, uh, tackle a strategy to uh, compete with apple and there are a lot of discussion going on there every other person has come up with some idea uh, people are like you know it, it's an, it's a never ending meeting then suddenly one person one on smart person who stood up and he shouted like you know like anything hey what's their market share and uh, people said like you know hey come again what, what do you mean what is the apple's market share in mobile industry today most of the people are mom uh, like a few people said maybe one person at the time nokia's market share was like uh, greater than 50% so he said like why should a company like us who is a market leader should even worry about uh, the new phone coming in and why, why should we worry about our customers we got all the customers with us why should we even hear the customers voice all right people are telling like you should change your os touch screen all those things but they were they didn't listen to their customers voice and the rest is history you know like today blackberry is even finding it very difficult to survive and nokia is no more right so i just wanted to start with this because voice of customers is really an important aspect for any business you can be you can be running a departmental store uh, you can be uh, selling cakes but it is really important and text analytics can help you in uh, major extent because only problem or only worry while coming to customer experience uh, the amount of resources and time you need to spend reading those blog reading those reviews tickets it's very difficult right and you can automate it fairly using text analytics let's quickly start with uh, this example let's say if you wanted to uh, if you are if you are running a phone company or a phone manufacturer or you are a, a marketing manager or a customer experience manager suppose you want to understand your product better what people are talking about it let's start with a couple of uh, thing so first and foremost thing what you will do people go and uh, uh, search for reviews uh, either it can be consumer reviews like uh, uh, what you can see in amazon or flipkart or it can be uh, it can be a post a short post in twitter like 140 character or it can be a detailed post in facebook or it can be from uh, critic writers like phone arena trusted reviews where they write lot of uh, these kind of phone reviews now once you go let's say there are a lot of companies actually in fact uh, uh, like you know they crawl the data out of these uh, sites and they give to you let's say you have access to this data now now you do a lot of this text analytics methods which we have seen uh, in the previous slides let's quickly start with one um, top feature sentiments let's say if you mine only your product reviews you got some 10000 20000 reviews from different forms and you try to apply the feature extraction algorithm and you combine with your sentiment algorithm here and you say hey if you really think lot of people are talking about uh, uh, the heat problem but people are really 
the red one is negative so people are talking really people are not uh, happy about your battery uh, in the sense like you know the lot of heat comes if the battery life is not good and uh, if you really think most of the people are happy about the price it's a good take away right so you can you can you can you can increase the price and started to improve your battery or uh, the other heating problem the third thing is like people are really very happy about your display and of course of course like if you are if you are if you are a product manager you would uh, really know the display quality is directly correlated with the battery life and the heat right you can reduce that a bit and you can improve the product in your next release because when it comes to uh, 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 like especially the smartphone industry every year a new flagship mobile comes in and all you have is one year to collect all your feedbacks and and come up with a revolutionary product better than your competitors now this is great and this 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 shows what my product does but it's a public forum end of the day right you can also get reviews from you for for your competitor products as well right let's see what if if uh, uh, if you want like you know i just wanted to uh, quickly give you a glimpse of how you can extract features before we see the competition uh, aspect uh, so if you could really see keep up uh, on your reading with audio books all the highlighters which you can see these are the features one can actually take out and algorithms can easily interpret because those words like uh, with or of or or grammatical purpose they really don't add any value or any meaning to the sentence now if you can strip this down and you have this set of keywords and you try to actually uh, uh, form it gather it you can do lot of things right this is this is a high level concept of how this feature extraction works uh, but let's quickly get into the story right now if you can do the sentiment analysis for all your competitor products uh, think of i i have a purposefully uh, uh, like you know kind of uh, 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 misspelled a lot of uh, words here just to not to not to actually do some illustrative uh, kind of an uh, understanding here so if you really think people are not even happy about the moto x but nessus 5 is really doing great and you can you can really understand with one simple chart where you stand you can have a lot of market reports sales reports but where you stand in terms of your consumer's voice this will give you right this is it cool where you can you can you can you can compare your competition within a fraction of second uh, without even like you know uh, worrying about like how my product is doing with the consumers now what if you you have one graph that tells about the different sentiments about different features across different geography because this is really important uh, today because like every other phone sells in different markets and if you really think this one illustrative graph says your phone is the price of your phone people are really happy in the us but where in in the uh, especially in the east asia in the china and india people are not happy about the price so what you can quickly say it like give a discount and increase the price in the other market right and you, you can one single graph tells lot of stories right it all backs back by text of course but the story is what uh, you need to take away from this entire deck or the entire analysis you can actually go there and you can try take action very immediately if you really even think uh, uh, when you, when you sell your phones across different geography where you have multiple uh, multiple kind of a hindrance to go there and collect all those feedbacks this is a very easy thing because the entire world is now discussing over the web and text becomes the entire part of your voice of customers then why can't you simply go ahead and try to do some text analytics yourself and it's not it's not that difficult if in fact like a lot of other companies have uh, pre built components and algorithms which they sell online where you can hit their apis you can do a lot of these stuffs which I, which we spoke today right uh, this is one uh, thing which i also wanted to add uh, something called tag cloud which you have seen all this word clouds beautiful word clouds but if you can extract couple of things out of your uh, textual reviews like slow your os these are the most people talking about it and uh, navigation non responsive touch these are quick actioning right when you want to make a quick decision uh, given that like you you want to go for a board meeting and within a within a within an hour you need to consume all the voice of consumers technology can help actually you know the day right uh, if you think like lot of these uh, charts which you have seen here will help you do lot of things now uh, uh, given that like we have seen how the uh, how this text analytics can help a smartphone industry and how all the text analytics framework which we have been discussing so far uh, you you would have a fair idea of like how this works right how this uh, entire text analytics frameworks or how this entire uh, 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 the practice of new analytics works uh, you'll have a fair idea now let's let's let let me stop here 
I I I know like there are a lot of things which I wanted to address as well, but I just wanted to keep it limit because like there are too much information in this one session. So let's quickly. Uh, I just wanted to address a couple of uh, uh, Q and A kind of a thing. So it might be it might be something like you know where uh, uh, I just wanted to uh, spend a couple of time to answer a couple of questions. Uh, you can raise your hand so that I can open up uh, their microphone. You can speak over the phone. And Naveen, I think. Uh, he raises his hand. Let me quickly. You are now unmuted. So Naveen, you can. Uh, I just unlock uh, or unmuted you. You can just like you know uh, speak over, or you can uh, use the chat forum. In fact, uh, you can actually uh, use the chat forum uh, that will be more effective to quickly address the questions. If you have any questions related to text analytics, I would be happy. I would be trying to help you understand a couple of things. If I could, I will answer now or I'll follow, you, follow up with you or mail. Okay, would you uh, also want me to? Okay. Okay, I think there's some logistics or something like that. Okay, cool. I mean, I, I get it like fine. So is there uh, anyone want to ask any questions here? Or should I continue with some other use case or any questions? Or do you want me to go through uh, some slides specifically where you want to uh, go and deep dive in particular slide? You can actually do that. Or would you like me to uh, go through some some uh, take some uh, slide and deep dive okay let me start with this okay i have one question framework okay so okay let me okay industry experience on the framework so maybe what we can do uh, i'll try to uh, give a couple of uh, interesting problems that we solved uh, uh, based on my experience short experience we had so one uh, one quick thing is like if you really see today the voice of consumers is mostly prevalent uh, in industries like where uh, uh, especially the smartphone industries or where a lot of tickets like uh, technology tickets are raised or wherein like people raise a lot of bugs where people want to consume it and there is this one client who uh, come in with no data at all. He said like, you know, hey, uh, I have a golf entertainment company where I have, uh, uh, I have my company in 10 different locations in the world. And uh, I just wanted to understand my consumer's voice. And he literally didn't come with any data. He said like, you know, hey, you said like you can help businesses and uh, it's your job to find the data right so okay fine you said like uh, you got no data but what's about your social presence they say like you know hey we are very quite active in facebook twitter uh, yelp and even there's one specific site where people write a lot of reviews to the golf the idea is like this company he, he provides a golf course and along with the golf course he got a restaurant so people can come in he can play i mean like people can come in they can play uh, golf hang out with their friends they can have uh, uh, food and beverages there this is a kind of a golf entertainment kind of a place now uh, he got his uh, 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 like you know presence in some 10 different uh, districts or 10 different states in the us now uh, he also got competitions right of course people not only go to him he also got competition now we said like you know this is very quite challenging the only thing is like uh, for example uh, uh, this this guy said like you no, know, I only have social presence. Uh, apart from that, I don't have any data. So we said like you no, know, let's quickly start gathering some of uh, data logistics. We did a small diagnostic and we understand a lot of his conversation or the consumers' conversation go on Twitter. They quickly go back and write, hey, this place is bad, and they tag that particular company and they go away. And we could see a lot of information available on the Twitter. So we we thought like okay. Let's go, let's collect six months of all the tweets that mentions this particular company's word. 
for example uh, today if you have some uh, problem with the product you can quickly you can try it i mean in fact if you are really pissed off with some of the customer experience writing emails if you go to the twitter page tag them say that like you know at now let's say some company and say hey your product is not working your customer service really sucks and people respond the response time for someone who sends through an email you get a lot of thing on the twitter let's say we collected some 6 months of tweets all the tweets that has we kept it aside now we went to facebook and they have a page and whatever promotions they run whatever uh, uh, discounts they run they have this like and they have this comments right we collected those comments for again for 6 months now we got now he came with no data now we went to twitter we got tweets second thing is like we got from facebook post now this is fine because these two are like short kind of an information which you can get short short form right now we went to l l p is a consumer website where you can go you can comment on detailed comment on a particular service or a product it's very similar to amazon or flipkart review but only thing is like it's an independent review site so you can talk about any product or service right so we went there then again for 6 months we collect uh, for the past 6 months we collected all the information which people write a review on these sites we put it there if you really think he came with no data within a week we have three powerful data one the short form tweets because quickly people can say it sucks it, it is great all those things second thing is posts from facebook or what all promotions he runs through today he doesn't even know whether it is effective or not all he have is like number of shares and likes but the posts or the comments lot of comments he don't even mind it right as you can see the most critical information lie in these sources right so we have that form of data more detail is the yelp reviews every review has a star to it some people will say 5 some people will say 1 some people even will say 3 stars right 5 being the happiest customer 1 being the most uh, uh, like you know uh, uh, experience was very bad for him right now what we did is like i'll start with l you see uh, in the framework you can see classification right we did a quick algorithm on it what we said let's do exercise let's split everyone who reviewed 1 and 2 to a separate class or split or let's say i would say group them separately now who were rated 4 and 5 group them separately now what you have is like these are the people who are really pissed off the 1 and 2 4 and 5 are the people who are really happy now run your feature extraction there what you can see really see all the features people are talking about when they are for example in this case parking uh, food uh, let's say uh, uh, the golf experience these are some of the features we got it now when we got those features we applied sentiment to it right when we applied sentiment to it what happened people in one location were really happy about the parking in one location people are very uh, very very much pissed off on the parking because like the parking times was uh, uh, was taking a lot of time so the entire experience was not that great now like that we used feature extraction sentiment analysis and classification these three goes hand in hand any problem you need to apply these three uh, uh, these three to frameworks together and you can form a detailed analysis now in the end we have given one single dashboard that talks about hey for the past 6 months this is your tweets that are positive a graph that tells about like this is positive and number of negative tweets now we added one more touch to it this is your competition in your place because who were talked about your product also pro- talked about a particular other product in your uh, domain now we gave that like no in fact like many of the competitors were not in their radar they thought like for a golf entertainment company uh, apparently a golf company would be the competitor but it's not the uh, case here because these people also provide entertainment and food right so people started comparing this with some other entertainment company like you know sini uh, hall or uh, barbecue hall or something like that so these are some interesting insights people started to understand that okay their business is what not only on the golf anymore it's more about the consumers think these people is not only for golf uh, for some entertainment for food and they wanted and one more interesting aspect which we mind over is like the pricing because this is very critical right same because these people have the same pricing for one hour they charge some 25 dollars for hanging out there and uh, in the state of uh, michigan people are very happy about it in an other state i think i guess like it's new york i uh, where people are really uh, felt that the price was very uh, uh, costly so what they can do they can they can change the prices based on the demand in one particular state in fact there was no competition at all 
So it's a monopoly market there. They can actually simply increase their price. They can actually uh, do a lot of things because it's the, it, it's, it's the only choice people have there. So if you really think a person came with no data and use, using text analytics or social media, today you can get a lot of information, apply back these frameworks, you can come up with a lot of beautiful charts, you can take a lot of decisions end of the day and the business can run effectively, very effectively, right? So that's one, one thing I just wanted to uh, 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 share with you. And again, I'm just waiting. Uh, would, you, would, you, uh, would you like to ask any questions or something like that? You can uh, post it here. Okay, you just wanted to go through. Yep. So if you really think uh, the feature extraction here, right? Today, uh, machine learning is our uh, natural language processing. That's what the science which uh, underlies text analytics. So if you really think today, what, you, what, what is this natural language processing or natural language understanding? It means that whatever we type or speak, how can a machine understand? Even for humans, it's very difficult. Most of the time when people talk and in fact, like, you know, uh, uh, if it is a different language, the case is very different, right? So for making a machine or machine end of the day is a dumb, right? You need to train it. You need to make it smart by giving it some data. Today, if you, uh, I'll give a very uh, classic example. Let's say you know uh, a bit of, I'll, I'll pick Hindi because in this case, I am very uh, poor at understanding Hindi. Hindi is one of the languages we uh, use in India. And uh, if you really think, uh, I, what I do, I know a couple of words which I, uh, which I can actually understand. So what I do when people speak, I try to capture those particular words uh, which I know the meaning personally and I try to map, mind map it saying that okay this guy is talking about some something related to this right so this is how the brain works when you when you really don't know the language right it's the very same case for uh, even uh, machine what machine does when you put through all the uh, text words that you write some rules saying that hey uh, you don't need to care about this list of words which we, which I call it as junk words or stop words where uh, the light, the dictionary will have a, is, or, uh, f uh, into, that, because these are the words that doesn't have any meaning to it, right? So I remove all those words. Now all I have is a bag of words that only talk about particular subject or a meaning, right? So what I do, I take that, now I, now the second thing is like what, you can write a rule, okay? Uh, I'll give a classic example. If you have lo laws of uh, lots of uh, news article that talks about the president of the US, uh, you will see Barack a simple word, Obama there's another word, right? But wherever Barack has come in, there should be Obama followed by it, right? So just think, I mean, we know uh, Obama he's a person, all those things we know. But what about machine? It doesn't even know it, right? But you can write a simple rule, or you can you can you can find a pattern to it, right? Whenever this word comes in this word follows up. Barack and Obama always come together. So there should be some relation to it. Either these words are not two separate words. It should be a name. It should be an entity, something like that. Now that's one intelligence you're getting out there. Same way, uh, you can create a simple bag of words, call it as positive, a simple bag of words, call it as negative. So the positive bag, you can put good, great, all those words you put in the bag. And whenever a new uh, text comes in, you go and see in the particular bag, this word is there or not. If it is there, say, okay, this word is a positive, plus one. Put as a plus one. When the word is in the negative, minus one. It's a simple sentiment, right? You can quickly start with uh, this experiment with, with basic programming knowledge. If you have, you can just quickly create these two dictionaries, one positive words of dictionary, one negative word of dictionary. And of course, you need the stop words, right? In the, in the web, there are a lot of uh, these kind of dictionaries are available. You, you just need to download it and uh, use it in your function, right? So if, if for example, uh, you can, you can actually talk about uh, movie reviews, right? When uh, there was one interesting comment which talks about a manufacturer or a movie review, right? And most of, most of the movie reviews and all those things, as you could see here, right? The sentiments which, which uh, some of the examples which I showed here. People say like, you know, child is not good. The mobile was heating much and it's intolerable. So intolerable is something which, which, which makes someone angry, right? People are really angry about it. You can either create these dictionaries, but how long? 
uh, how, how, how big can you create this dictionary, right? So you can also try to run an other exercise. Go, go to maybe Twitter and collect some 100 tweets that you think are positive. Don't worry about what words it has. You just pick those 100, 100 tweets that you think are positive and put it in a bag. Similar way, find those 100 tweets that, re that really talks about bad about a movie review or something like that. Put it in another bag. Now, what you have is like you really don't know the words in it, but you read through it and you manually labeled it. Labeled in the sense like you've manually validated it, right? Now, can you take all the words, removing those top words and all those things, all the words from the positive bag and keep it aside and the negative words, keep it aside. Now, if you really think all those subject specific words, right? Because like it's not any more uh, uh, generic. In case of movies and uh, uh, mobiles, people talk very different in terms of movies. Uh, they'll talk different about in case of mobile because in mobile it's more about screen display heat all those things but movies is all about this scene was great uh, the uh, camera uh, person did an excellent job so those kind of things is what uh, movies talk so you cannot apply the same set of words for every context uh, in fact like uh, in industries it might be uh, a bit difficult because like people might talk about tickets people might talk about company specific keywords those subject matter experts are not available to us right so you can actually uh, go collect these examples this is what uh, machine learning does end of the day if you can build this write a piece of code to do this this is this is exactly what machine learning does and it's called supervised learning in uh, 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 it's, a jar it's a jargon just leave it when I just wanted to tell that like every other algorithms that exist today or uh, intuitively or something like some human uh, 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 inspired by how we think or how we inspire how, how our brain does a job it's been done right okay let me stop here uh, we had have enough conversation I guess and it was mostly monologue I was expecting a lot of questions from you guys so but I understand like you know I can also um, uh, send you a couple of uh, other uh, pointers where you can uh, take it forward how you can like uh, make your business more effective take decisions end of the day uh, decision making is what uh, really matters and there's a final question okay cool uh, very interesting and thank you for that question because like talk about uh, tools to uh, get these algorithms cracking yeah that's uh, i would say there are uh, two things. Uh, okay, let me let me uh, do it in two different ways. Suppose you are a, you are a business decision maker and you don't have enough programming knowledge. You can go and uh, get tools like Alchemy. Alchemy API is one very uh, famous API. Uh, so what they do is like they have all these components given in there. You go subscribe it. You pass the text to it. And what all feature it, it gives a beautiful dashboard where you can work on it. And in fact, like last year, Alchemy API was acquired by IBM. So IBM's Blue Mix has an inbuilt uh, capability to do it. One, two, um, as I said, Azure, uh, Microsoft's Azure, right now have a lot of this machine learning packages inbuilt on their cloud, which has all this pre-built algorithms. When you pass it to it, if you select the sentiment, it gives a score to it too. And uh, if you are a programmer, let's say you, if you want to crack it on your own, uh, then maybe uh, R and Python are the uh, most prevalent languages uh, that has a lot of packages where you can do a lot of text mining. And uh, there's one toolkit called NLTK. It's Natural Language Processing Toolkit. Uh, so it's, it's, it's called, I'm just typing it, it's called NLTK. Uh, it's, a, it's a very famous uh, Python package that has all these pre-built packages where you can do uh, all these algorithms, where you just pass through the text and gives you a score, right? Uh, I think they, these are the two things where you can start with. Uh, there are other platforms like OpenLLP and uh, in fact, uh, uh, Hadoop Big Data has one uh, text analytics as well. But to start with, I would say like R Python if you're a programmer or Alchemy API uh, via Bluemix or Azure is the way to go, right? Uh, any questions? I think we got another 10 minutes or we can quickly wrap up. Okay, I guess like, uh, I I guess like, you know, I think the questions are over. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, for your time. I really appreciate uh, your presence here. Uh, we are, we are, as I said, right, uh, we are a startup and we are uh, releasing our first episode and the response was really overwhelming and uh, 
thank you for time and in the future we'll be running a lot of these episodes and uh, uh, we wanted to do it in different formats where two people speak it's a kind of an interview where you get a lot of chances to engage uh, we also will follow up with you with a lot of materials where you can actually use it and start uh, reading your particular topic once again uh, thank you for joining and uh, a very good evening and good night bye for now see you